This short video describes how to perform motor sparing distal, median and ulnar nerve blocks, which are useful not just as rescue blocks, but also in providing surgical anesthesia for minor hand surgery or motor sparing hand surgery with intraoperative testing. The median nerve is easily located by placing the probe on the ventral aspect of the mid forearm, where it will be seen with a bit of tilting lying between flexor digitorum superficialis and profundus. It may be traced into the distal wrist beyond the innervation of the muscle belly of flexor digitorum superficialis and profundus by the median nerve and its anterior interosseous branch. The main advantage of blocking it in this more distal location is to ensure that there is motor sparing of the forearm flexor muscles. The nerve may be blocked using an in-plane or out-of-plane approach advancing the needle tip at a tangent to its surface into the fascial sheath that surrounds it to avoid piercing the nerve itself. In this video, we're targeting the median nerve at a more distal location. I like to use a single operator technique with a 25 gauge hypodermic needle. Again, advance the needle at a tangent to the nerve surface, aim to enter the fascial compartment, and produce a nice spread that outlines the nerve without causing any nerve expansion. Use the local anesthetic jet to create a sp safe space around the nerve. With the arm in the same supinated position, we can identify the ulnar nerve. This is most easily done by placing the probe close to the wrist crease over the ulnar artery. The ulnar nerve is always located immediately adjacent and medial to the artery. Both nerve and artery can be traced proximally to the forearm where they will start to separate. For an ulnar nerve block at the wrist, the nerve may be blocked anywhere in the lower half of the forearm as long as it is proximal to the takeoff of the dorsal cutaneous branch and the palmar cutaneous branch. The dorsal cutaneous branch winds around the bony ulna to innervate the dorsum of the medial hand and fourth and fifth digits. It can usually be seen separating from the ulnar nerve on ultrasound when you're close to the proximal wrist crease. And these branches usually arise close to the wrist crease so it's advisable to keep the probe proximal to that surface landmark to ensure that they are covered. As with the median nerve, a more distal injection site should be chosen if complete motor sparing of flexor carpi ulnaris and digitorum profundus is desired. An in-plane or out-of-plane approach can be used depending on what is ergonomically most feasible. Once again, advance the needle tip at a tangent to its surface to avoid piercing it and aim to inject into the fascial sheath to surround the nerve with local anesthetic. In this video, the ulnar nerve is targeted at that more distal location where it is lying adjacent to the artery. Once again, more experienced practitioners can use a single operator technique with a 25 gauge hypodermic needle. Hydrolocation helps to ascertain the position of the needle tip. And once the needle tip is within the fascial envelope surrounding the nerve, further movement and manipulation of the needle is generally not necessary. Let the local anesthetic jet and the fascial compartment contain the local anesthetic and allow it to surround the nerve. 